let's talk about practice and rehearsal spots. How important they are if you live in New York, maybe Chicago, definitely LA, maybe even Austin. Okay. I also want to talk about how amazingly easy your life can be if you are in college right now. Okay. Something you don't have to pay for or even really think about. Uh, actually, I think you're paying for it. You're paying a lot for it. But you don't really have to think about it. You have to sign your name up and get into a rehearsal spot. Okay, here we go. Here's New York Rehearsal Studios for Jazz Musicians. Okay, so this is my first rehearsal spot that I got when I moved to New York. It's still mine, okay? Really great thing about this is uh, daytime rehearsal spot, evening it's a performance venue, okay? So I actually just played the other night, so this is called I-Beam Brooklyn, nondescript, kind of a rough looking street. You go in and so it's a big space, I mean, it's a big-ish space. We have a really good piano, drum set, which I help upkeep, uh, amps, there's some mics, mic stands, lots of music stands, okay? And then a sound system. And uh, they've got decent speakers up top, okay? And a really loud heater. That's industrial heating at its finest, which means you got that while I talk. So the really great thing is you can, if you're a member here, you get to host shows for free. Okay, so this just is the stage and you put chairs out and there you go. And it seats 40 people, give or take, 30, 40 people, very comfortably. Okay, so here's my second rehearsal spot. So this is near the New York City Sanitation Department. I think all the uh, all the salt for Brooklyn stored over there. And then we have this great overpass. Nice door key. Okay, so definitely different than my other spot. Much smaller. Uh, there are the cool festive lights. That's kind of nice. So, yeah, amps. Small drum set. Bring your own cymbals. I store a little bit of stuff up there. Um, mirrors. Uh, it's definitely different. Okay, so this smaller type room that I have is called a 24-hour lockout room. That happens in LA, New York, kind of everywhere. So basically you rent the room, you get a key. Everybody that's in your room gets the key. You can kind of come and go as you please. Um, it's usually in a building with a lot of 24-hour lockout rooms, just like yours. So this type of studio can be slightly problematic. Um, there's a funny story uh, the, before I got here. The studio next to me, uh, there used to be a drummer, singer, keyboard player named Josh Dion. If you don't know Josh Dion, he's in a band called Paris Monster Duo. Um, uh, look up Paris Monster, Josh Dion, uh, A Vision Complete. Check out that live. Check, it, check out that on YouTube. So, um, Josh Dion is an absolute badass. Do you want to know how you become a badass? You practice stuff over and over and over and over again. So if, say you're here playing, you know, some really cool, weird, esoteric jazz or something, and next door you have, for hours, problematic but amazing.
So that's two versions of practice rooms. And I would say that most big cities, kind of the practice rooms fall somewhere in between those. One being a lot more expensive, uh, pianos that have to be tuned and taken care of, uh, sound systems that have to be bought, purchased. Uh, the other side being, you know, you bring an extra amp, uh, you buy an inexpensive drum set for the spot, okay? Very different, all the same, same thing. Um, understand that if you're just a rock guy, you typically don't need a piano, you're gonna use an electric something, uh, your price goes down a lot. Um, let's talk about prices. So a lot of these prices are kind of pretty much standard here. Uh, you might have a place that's $50 more or $50 less, but this is pretty, pretty close. And we're going to talk about smaller rooms because uh, the person that asked me this is thinking about moving to New York uh, after school. And they asked me about practice rooms. Okay. So a nine by seven room, so think about that nine by seven room, uh, typically is somewhere between the five and $600 a month. Okay. So nine by seven, a baby grand, for example, is basically five by five. A concert grand is a six by nine. My smaller studio kind of falls in that nine by seven, 10 by 11 room. So there's, I think, five or six of us that rent that spot. I, I think we all pay $100 a month, and it's kind of right in there. Um, I typically am in that spot six to 12 hours a week, you know. That's kind of a, usually it's more like six or seven hours a week. Um, typically go there uh, to practice time and stuff. I, I do have some, like, smaller group rehearsals in there because the room's really, really small. Um, if you step up uh, in size, room size, you can get the much, much larger to put a piano in, in, in some of those typical New York rehearsal areas. You know, you're just looking at $1,200. So the next rehearsal, my big rehearsal space, that's a setup a little different. That's, that's um, think of it as a collective, except it's run by one guy. Um, there are select people that are members of iBeam, and um, we don't get a lot of time in there. We, I, I get four two-hour slots, so eight hours total, and I think I pay 120 a month, give or take. <clears throat> so the rooms are really for different things. When I'm working on time, and, and you know, or uh, I've been working out of the Chafee book again. Uh, which is just kicking my butt because um, I haven't done it in so long. Uh, I go there. I feel really guilty when I'm in the big room and it's like I'm there playing time and there's this beautiful piano and all, and all this room. And, and so I feel really guilty about not utilizing that room. And, and typically that room, uh, those hours get eaten up when I schedule performances. So those are the two differences. Um, Understand, you have to have people, I mean, unless you're just rich, uh, you have to have people to go in with you on these rooms. Here's my last little thing to say about practice rooms and then how lucky people in music school are. Um, for example, I'm also really lucky that I get to play in my apartment. It's a really old building, okay? And typically, let me just, let me just show you. When I'm playing, this is, uh, it is six o'clock right now. This is how light I play here. I really work on touch and feel. Okay, so I'm, I'm not playing loud at all. I'm really not. Every once in a while I do because I record like indie rock overdubs and some soundtracks. Think about this. If you're in school, you have access to so many different instruments, okay? Kind of all the time. I feel like most schools have a million pianos. You can pretty much get on a piano all the time. I don't have that luxury at my house. And then, don't get me started about percussion instruments. So when I was getting my grad degree at the University of Tennessee, 
I would work on all these indie rock albums and I would just go in the auditorium and they'd bring recording equipment in and I'd record all this stuff. Okay, I'm lucky I have a vibraphone, um, I have bell, like orchestral bells, and this is full of percussion. The problem is, is when you get out of school, you're not going to have all that stuff. So if somebody says, hey, let's record uh, some five octave marimba stuff. Uh, you're a jazz major and you just happen to buy a five octave marimba? No. So you, you are so lucky and I do understand because you're so busy and you're just trying to get out of school and you've got to read all about opera for your history class um, to do all these extra things. I'm just saying, please remember it because when you get out, you're going to be like, oh shit, I really wish I had a set of crotales. I'm writing new music or, or uh, more avant jazz and I really want some, you know, some, I want to Glen coach it out. Anyways, the problem is you, unless you buy it, you're, there's no rehearsal studios here that you can go in. Uh, you can go to Carol Sound and I think... Um, a, a rehearsal room there is like what, 50, 60 bucks an hour. And then uh, if you order a marimba, I think that's extra, that's, you know, like 30, 40 bucks an hour for the room. It's, you know, that's, that's unfeasible. So understand uh, that uh, you're in a killer opportunity and you're going to have to figure it out. Now, if you move to Austin, move to Chicago, chances are you probably can play in your house. Sometimes your apartment. Again, I'm really lucky. I want, it's gratitude that I can play here. So that's what I would have to say about practice rooms. Um, it's just another thing you have to deal with. Uh, last thing, say you've got five of your best friends and you're renting a really nice rehearsal space. And then one of your friends gets poor and cannot pay you. That's another, that's another thing. And I feel like everybody I know that, that runs the lease, the main, the main name on the lease for a rehearsal studio, they're always having to struggle to find somebody because so-and-so's leaving and, and I got to get somebody back in. So practice rooms for New York and kind of big cities. I would say that price-wise, it's probably similar most places. Uh, probably cheaper in Chicago. I think LA has gotten really stupidly priced. Um, anyways, if you have any questions, please, please get in touch. Uh, if there's something I didn't cover, please get in touch. Um, these I gotta start doing these videos more. Please get in touch, and really thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you stuck around to the end, here's a picture of me 20 years ago with really dark hair. Anyways, talk to you soon. Bye.